Welcome, welcome to another episode of the RV Voice. Today we have a wonderful guest. He's from a company that is taking the RV world by storm, Brinkley RV. We have Paul Laux with us today. All right, Paul, sweet. So, Thank Paul, you, you want to give us your introduction, so what you do for the company and kind of your background just to build some credibility in yourself. So brag about yourself for a little bit. Okay. Well, um, been in the industry now uh, about, let's see, I started in 2015, so coming up on nine years. Um, was with another OEM for about eight years and then jo joined the Brinkley team late last year in the fall. Um, you know, I worked with a lot of the guys, in my previous employer and, and, uh, was excited to join kind of a new startup, got in, um, from a completely different background. I served in the restaurant business for gosh, I don't know, seven, eight years after college. And, um, what's been fun about joining the Brinkley team is it's all new. It's fresh. It's innovative to your point. You know, we've, we've really captivated an audience and, and customers that are either new to the industry or those that have camped, you know, most of their lives. And I think there's a lot of cool stuff that we're doing on the production side, you know, what, how we're developing product and ideas that we're uh, creating through, through innovation, through, you know, R and D process. And what's unique is our company kind of stands differently where our owners actually go out and live the lifestyle in camp. So I know I'm jumping around a bit, but that's kind of what drew me over here. It was just the excitement of uh, what they're doing at Brinkley. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're sweet. They are nicer than most houses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, today we're going to be talking about Brinkley model Z, correct? Yes. And this is everything we need to know for someone to buy a Brinkley model Z. Okay. All right. I just take it away. Take the ropes, baby. All right. Um, well, so I kind of started to go in this path, but um, Brinkley was founded by five equal part owners. Uh, there's two of which, Ron and Bill Fennick. Um, they've been in the industry a long time, worked with other manufacturers, run successful companies. And then there's a group of uh, three younger guys. So we have Ryan Twaits, Micah Staley, and Nate Goldenberg. Um, these guys have all had more product expertise and experience in their backgrounds. Um, some of them well-rounded, you know, like Ryan, for example, has, has uh, branched off into transportation companies and supplier companies. Um, but Micah and Nate have always kind of been at the OEM level in manufacturing and product design. Super creative guys, uh, very talented. And what they've done is the five of these guys have come together and, and put to the test, really. I think what we saw from really 2020 to 22 was obviously a spike in demand with COVID buying um, new entrants into the industry, into the market that had never RV'd before, had never thought about RVing before. That said, we also saw a big shift in the market going from, you know, people that were going out for weekend camping, maybe weekend warriors, long trips in the summer when they could have the kids out of school. We saw, we've seen, and I think I speak for most of the people in the industry, we've seen a giant shift moving away from, you know, those weekend camping buyers. And we're seeing a lot of people that are using these RVs as full time, whether it be a residence or, you know, they're spending an extended amount of time in it, traveling nurses, people using these for work, uh, parking a, a, an RV at a lake property and going back and forth, treating that as their cabin to get away on the weekends. Um, so the whole, the whole industry really shifted during that time and collectively, these guys have all gathered extensive amounts of feedback in, in product development from people that RV. And that said, I kind of touched on it before, but these guys also, the younger three that design the product, they take their prototypes out and camp in them. They take their families out, they go on weekend trips or a long camping trip. There's all kinds of content on our website too. If you haven't seen it, I would encourage, I always use this as part of my product training, but I encourage people to go and watch these. Micah, when he designed our flagship brand, the Model Z, built a proto, took it out on a 6,000 mile road trip and came back with like 250 different items that he wanted to change and reflecting, you know, things that he experienced. And then also inviting people into the, into the rig and saying, Hey, tell me what you think. What would you improve on? What do you think of the aesthetic? You know, let me show you some features. And so to come back from a long camping trip with, you know, 
200 and some odd, 250 some odd changes is pretty substantial. And that's before it hits the production floor. And I can speak from experience in working with these guys is it doesn't stop there. You know, it, it, it goes beyond just, okay, now we've got our changes and then we're going to, we're good for a while. It's just, it's a constant evolution and development, uh, striving to be better, you know, make the industry a little bit better, uh, create product that people want to camp in that, that they want to be in. And, and we're finding, you know, again, going back to my original point, we're finding a lot of people are using these for more than just an RV. And so we've got somewhere in the, in the ballpark of 30 to 40% of our customers are telling us that they're treating these like their homes, you know, on wheels. And again, if that's six, nine months out of the year that they're living in it every single day, I mean, it's, it's pretty substantial. So that's kind of where they, they got around to this idea. But I think the thing that stands out to me the most is people that, that are designing these, you don't typically see guys that are living the lifestyle, taking their families out. And I can speak from experience with Micah. He's, he's uh, come back more excited from camping trips with his family and unique changes that he wants to make to prototypes that we're currently going in. Uh, not just the first one. So each new model, he likes to go out and kind of battle test it. That's awesome. Because not everybody does that. I mean, there's a lot of big wigs that just like do this, do that, you know, not in a bad sure. way, but sure. this, they have they have their campers they don't want to take out a new one uh but super cool i heard that story i think didn't he go down to like florida or something like that take a long uh, trip nate, down that way nate actually took the model g down to florida with his family uh micah went out he took it out west i think malibu california uh park city utah i mean it was a giant loop west. out west and back and nate did the same but went down to the southeast and came back up and uh, so Ryan will eventually take on a, a product design and he'll, you know, he'll do the same thing. He'll take that thing out and use it and abuse it and, you know, get all the feedback and even, you know, just, I think spending time in something, you generate more ideas for yourself uh, on how to make it better. Absolutely. That's called R and D at its finest. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> awesome. Well, what's next? So I have a little uh, presentation I can go through. Um, and, and it kind of gives a, a general overview for customers that may not have heard of us uh, or, you know, for your salespeople that uh, this is obviously something that I lean on in training, especially if it's like a first time training with a dealership level. Um, you know, the Model Z was created under the assumption that we're not going to be fit into a certain segment. And so you have your what you call mid profile, mid size fifth wheels, and then you've got your high profile fifth wheels. And these guys you know, kind of set this product line right in between. And so what we've done is we've created a mid size, but we created a luxury brand that's really pulling a lot of features that even some of your higher end price point uh, models just don't have. And so we'll get into a lot of this of some things that we do different and unique. And, and quite frankly, we're seeing customers that are coming out of motorized, they're coming out of airstreams, they're coming out of um, high profile rigs to downsize slightly. But then we're also getting the flip side, people that maybe have uh, a smaller travel trailer or a, a mid-profile, mid-size fifth wheel that they want to, they're getting so much more um, in the content, the features, the benefits. And it's a more, you know, camper-friendly RV. I mean, it's just, it's thought out, it's designed well, it's functional, and it looks good. So. Looks um, dang good. Dang yeah. Good. But we'll, uh, all right, let's make sure I can do this. All right. All right. We looking good? We looking great. Okay. So this is the exterior of our Model Z, uh, three quarter view, and then the front cap there. So one thing that stands out, and I think obviously you guys have seen them on in person, but um, these things look very different than what the customary, you know, we call it swooshes or graphics everywhere. We've cleaned everything up and taken a more modern stylistic approach to the graphics package. And it looks really great with just about any tow vehicle color. Um, obviously, everybody's got their their baby that they pull uh, these RVs with. And, um, you know, you put a, a black truck in front of this, a, a white truck, a tan truck, a silver truck. I mean, it, it can go along with anything. So mm -hmm. um, just a nice clean line when it's all buttoned up. It just looks really slick being pulled down the highway. I thank you for that because they had some struggles with the high-end fifth wheels, the mm -hmm. whole industry. 
Like I love the Jayco North Point a couple of years ago because of that reason. It was mostly black and white. It just matches. Sure. Yeah. And there's always cycles to everything. So I'm sure at some point in time, you know, something will bounce back that was popular and now isn't quite as popular, but um, yeah, it was a, it was definitely a risk, but high, in my opinion, high reward to do that and, mm -hmm. and take a stance and just say, Hey, let's try something different. Mm -hmm. um, so again, I, I kind of went through some of this already, but here's our story. Uh, newer company founded in 22, started producing units in early 23. So we're still very, very young as a manufacturer, but the experience level um, is all there. So uh, not your typical startup, of course. We're privately owned with five owners. We've got Ryan Twaits on the far left. Um, and again, he's had a different background with other manufacturing experience, product design, general management. And then he's also branched out and done some other things in the in the industry, still related to RVs, of course, with suppliers and and uh, transport companies. Ron and Bill Fennick in the center front, uh, two brothers co-founded other uh, various companies over the years. Very, very good at what they do, marketing backgrounds, sales backgrounds. Um, and I think what they do is, you know, kind of drive a lot of the uh, decision making or just expertise, right? They're, they're owners and consultants and they've, they've seen it all just about uh, at this point in their career. Micah is the center back. So uh, Micah Staley designs the Model Z, which we'll talk about today. And uh, and he obviously I've touched on this, too. He camps in these things. He When he builds a new prototype or comes out with a new model, he's taking it out. And then on the far right, Nate Goldenberg is our uh, fifth owner with the Model G product line. He has also got a video on our website where he takes his first Model G down to Florida with his family. And so um not to get too far off topic, but obviously you guys have seen and heard about the G3950, which has been extremely popular for us and is doing very well on the retail side. So, um, you know, the creativity, <clears throat> excuse me, the creativity he brings to the table with the toy hauler segment is just, it's unmatched. And we'll cover that in another video. Oh yeah. We got lots of stuff to talk about. Oh on yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so uh, I, again, this is, some of this is redundant, but again, we'll get into it. So Model Z, it's a midsize luxury fifth wheel. We feature two things, an automotive exterior and a residential interior. And we, we assume that we're not going to yield any compromise, right? So <clears throat> we want to make sure that we're putting out the highest level of feature content. Um, price point, we stand above most of what our direct competition would be. But like I touched on before, we're we're in between price points and we're in between segments where we tend to pull a lot of high profile high-end buyers into our product just because we feature a lot of the content that they're accustomed to um so a couple items that that we like to highlight here we have 7k axles on all floor plans which is not the norm for a mid-size but we do have a couple floor plans uh, 3400 and also the 3610 that feature 8k axles we put 17 and a half inch H rated Cooper tires on all Model Z fifth wheels. We have flush floor opposing slides for your main um, opposing slide outs. Again, on an eight wide frame, that's not very common. Usually you don't get that until you go to a wide body chassis, like 101 inch. Um, also, we've got the 79 and a half inch interior bedroom height. So that's something that, again, people take for granted when they're having, especially for the taller customers, they're getting in and out of showers or they're, you know, getting ready in the bathroom, going to bed, trying to make the bed. And it just, it, you know, you got your taller customers, especially at a retail trade show. We're very acclimated with seeing guys like having to crouch down and, and go under doorways. And, you know, how am I going to make the bed when I, you know, I'm standing here with a cramped neck. So that is something that I think most people take for granted. Um, that's a huge feature. Mm -hmm. So some of this is redundant, but we're, again, I touched on this, we're creating a newer segment. So it's a mid pro size or a package, but with full pro features. And uh, we'll get into a lot of these features, but your MSRP range is a, about a 20K spread. So you're just over a hundred thousand before any freight is added up to about 125K in our 3610 and, and the 3400, our biggest two. So these are just generic. I'm not gonna go through tons and tons of stuff here cause we'll cover most of this, but this is our 2900 floor plan. This was our second to the market. Very popular layout, currently our shortest fifth wheel that we produce at 3211. Um, 
What's really nice about this one is the bathroom bedroom setup. Normally you have a corner shower, like a little radius shower and your wardrobe slides out. What Mike has done is turn that sink over into the slide and just opened up that whole space. So we actually boast the same size shower that we put into our, our 3100 uh, Z with the 30 by 42. So it just opens everything up. And then you've got your traditional dual posing rear living set up in the, uh, in the main living area. So just a great compact unit for those that want something a little bit shorter, could be a length thing, could be a, you know, not a huge spread on the weight, but might be a weight thing, keeps you under 12,000 pounds. Mm. But again, we'll go over into all the features a little bit later, so I won't get into the weeds with that stuff. Yeah, and that's one of the best-selling floor plans across everything, like whole industry. That's like the, the rear flowing floor plan, about 33 yeah. foot, is the floor plan. Oh, yeah. So between the 2900 and then this was our first is the 3100. Nice. Um, those are both bread and butter, right? If, mm -hmm. if you've got these in your lineup, um, your odds are you're selling quite a few. Mm -hmm. And so by only going two feet longer, uh, this 3100, which was Proto 1, by the way, the first model that we produced, um, you turn the bed slide out to give you the mm -hmm. east west with the king bed. I didn't I did lapse in mentioning the, the 60 by 80 queen is in the 2900. So you can't get a king in that one. But here, by going two feet longer, it gains you the king. You've got your front wardrobe closet. You've got stackable washer dryer prep and also a dresser at the foot of the bed. So you gain a lot as far as storage goes. Um, and then also for those that want the king bed and the slide out, a different setup, more walking space at the foot of the bed. Mm -hmm. um, that's a great, great floor plan uh, option versus the 2900. Oh, yeah, that slide out bed, man, it's a big difference. It's a home run. Yeah, everybody yeah. likes the slide out bed. It's it's virtually any brand. I know you guys sell Jayco, you sell Grain Design Alliance. Any floor plan like this with a bed slide out with dual opposing rear, um, you know, living slide outs, that's going to typically be your number one seller um, yep. when it comes to As long as they got the truck. Yeah, 100%. It's a great <laughs> layout. So um, this was our third, and ignore the pre-production preview, but it is – Definitely in full production. Um, the 3610. So this is a something unique where, you know, again, touching on early, early in our conversation where we saw the market shifting away from weekend warrior camping. This is an ideal setup for somebody that wants a, a, a unique, whether it be sleeping space, use it as kind of a bunk room area, sleeping area, or you can consider it more of a like a mid bonus office room, TV room, storage area, you name it. Uh, that center room, uh, I don't know if you can see my cursor here, but mm -hmm. just hovering right over, this thing has tall ceilings. We've, we've chosen to nix the loft off the hallway that you often see in this type of layout. And it gives you more sleeping area, more seating, um, and then ample uh, ceiling height in there. So it just opens up that whole thing. Back here, uh, very, very similar to your 3100 and 2900 layout. There's some subtle differences here because we've worked this center office in. Um, and then your your bedroom bathroom will be the same as that 3100. So you've got your king bed slide out, washer dryer prepped, and then front closet as well. I like how you keep the door on the, I guess, door side for that bunk room. Because mm -hmm. a lot of them, will, you'll see them towards They'll the back right end. Here. Oh, yep. and it just yep. gets rid of all the cabinet space. Yep, so we do, we do a little uh, side hutch here with some overhead cabinets and then your pantry with adjustable shelving, which we'll get more more looks at here in a bit. Beautiful. The 3110 is our, this was our fourth model into production. Oh, cool. And so we're currently building this one. This is a little bit shorter compact package. So it's, it'll lengthwise, it'll be overall the same as your 3100. But instead of that bed slide out, your bedroom and bathroom setup will be like the 2900. So you'll have that wardrobe and, and bathroom sink and vanity in the slide out. And then you'll have your big 30 by 42 shower. So same setup up here. So again, queen bed only versus the king option or the king force. Um, also, you won't have a washer dryer connection in a north south bed like this in the 2900. But what you do gain back here are these giant bunks, oversized bunks with storage. And then also a second TV back here for the uh, kids or guests. Mm -hmm. And then what's unique about this is we set it up a little differently than your standard traditional bunk setup. These uh, typically you'll have like a, a booth dinette or U-shaped dinette of some sort 
we've actually chosen to go cross conversational seating. So you can seat more people comfortably and then you can just sit around, hang out, play, you know, card games, watch a movie, watch a, a ball game, whatever you want to do. Um, this is also a great option for, you know, those doing like deer lease or, you know, going hunting, uh, you know, oil fields, that kind of stuff where you can sleep and seat more people. Now you yeah. said the opposing flush fours are there's on all models. These mm -hmm. perfect. Yeah. Cause yep. this one you usually other than the couch like that, you, you do see that lip. So this is a really good one. Yeah. So we'll have, we have flush floor slides. They kind of sit down in a pan. Mm -hmm. Um, and they get it. I mean, I got to give production credit. They, they get that thing some at some times or it's almost unnoticeable. Um, and, and really, I mean, when you're in there, it's very hard to tell. A lot of people even make comments about how they can't even tell that it was Leno cut and it's in a slide. I've mm -hmm. had people ask me if they're in a slide before. It's kind of funny. <laughs> um, one note on the model Z3110. So this is your back storage, which we'll show you in a bit. Our normal storage cuts off right about here off. This is the back wall that we're looking at with your receiver hitch. We've integrated an extra storage up above that L shapes around. So over here on the right picture is your side wall on the door side. Mm -hmm. And then this is the rear wall on the left picture. And so total, you get 156 cubic feet of storage with 58 of which being back here. And that's just the back end. Yeah. You Massive still got amount the of underbelly. Yep. And you'll yep. still have your front unobstructed pass through. I don't know if you can see very well in the photo here, but this is a little heat duct. Mm -hmm. So you'll force heat down to this area. So if you have anything that's kind of climate sensitive, that's cool. that can be heated up. And then there's a little 110 outlet back here. So again, you can plug things in that that need uh, plugged into 110. Very nice. <clears throat> so this one is uh, our newest to the Z fifth wheel lineup. And it's out in the field, but it, they're getting scooped up quickly or pre-ordered. Oh, yeah. Our Model Z 3400. Mm -hmm. This is probably, in my opinion, the most unique that we have in our lineup. Um, it, it kind of, again, it's not really, it doesn't fit into a, a mold that midsize typically do. So we have a patio deck back here. So it's similar to like a ramp door on a toy hauler. But this isn't considered a toy hauler floor plan. It's really outdoor entertainment. Mm -hmm. And I can link over to our website later if we need to look at any pictures but this thing is bad to the bone it's got uh again dual opposing slides <clears throat> this is one where we flip our galley slide onto the door side mm -hmm. and then we run our seating and and dinette over on the off door side it's a little mini hallway here with a side load access door so if you've got little tiny like weber grill or you want to put some you know outdoor equipment some cooking gear or whatever in a little tub and slide it right there um, during transit, it won't be bouncing all throughout the unit because you have a vapor door here that enters in and out of the coach. And then you've got your, obviously your patio deck would be up. This one's unique too, because it actually boasts three uh, gray tanks in total, which wow. we'll, we'll get on into a little bit later about our, our gray tank capacities. Yeah, And this then is this one. Go ahead. No, oh, no, no. After you. This is a first of its kind, right? The, the back patio, the, like garage door. Um, I wouldn't call it necessarily first of its kind, but it's our spin on something that, you know, we feel others have attempted and it's, this is just a little different way to do it. But some have tried to work in small little garage areas on a conventional, you know, fifth wheel chassis. And it, it doesn't always, and I don't know, it doesn't always tend to be a top seller. So this is definitely more niche, but we've seen extremely, you know, positive results with people buying in because this setup doesn't detract anything from in here, right? Correct. Normally, if you're trying to put people where they can sit back here, it's going to pull something from the interior. Correct. And so by having it set up this way, it just, it, it just opens up the entire coach for the inside, maximum amount of storage. Um, but instead here, you've got a big 50 inch TV, uh, a mini fridge, and then you've got tons of overhead and, and uh, under, you know, storage under the countertop there. So it's like your own little personal entertainment center, patio, outdoor kitchen. You know, you can be hanging out there drinking some adult beverages, watching a game, 
or uh, non-alcoholic, whatever you prefer. <laughs> yeah, you're camping. You should be outside. Yes. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, and then we've had a lot of folks too because we still include the patio railing. We've had a lot of folks bring up, "Oh man, this is great for my pets. This is great for my dogs to run around um, out here and just be outside where they're not going to be, you know, getting into it with other animals." Mm -hmm. So, um, one thing too that's unique here. This is our first uh, of the Model Z with the bed slide out, but you still have a walk-through bathroom here. Wow. So yeah. it kind of takes the best of both worlds of those 2,900, 3,110, but it, it opens things up where you can move about without having to go only off of the hallway. Yeah, I can't so, think of off the top of my head or another model that does that. So QR codes, um, we've recently remove this middle portion. We used to have a, a QR on the pin box that uh, when the dealership unit arrived, they would scan that in as part of their check-in process. That has uh, just recently gone away. But one of the cool things that we've done here at Brinkley is, you know, brochures always get lost or uh, a customer may be out on the lot looking at 10 to 12 different RVs that day. And they might be hopping from unit to unit and they can't recall, oh man, what is it? How much does this one weigh? How long is it? Um, you know, what kind of features does it have? So we've incorporated little scannable QR codes right onto the entry door. And that links the customer or the salesperson, if they're trying to get the information directly to our website. And so it'll take like this one, for example, is a 3,100. It'll take them right to that spec sheet of the 3,100 link to our website, um, where they can rattle off the, you know, answer any questions or the customer can have it, that tab opened on their phone for later. And uh, very, very easy to get to and navigate, which is great. What's more impressive, in my opinion, is the QR in the off-door side utility center. Oh, wow. This links us to our owner's hub videos. So those are right on our website. And we have specific owner's hub pages for all of our product segments. Um, the Model Z air travel trailers, the Model Z fifth wheels, and the Model G um, fifth wheels as well. And it will show them a multitude of things, how to winterize their coach, how to change a light bulb, how to turn on their, you know, lighting and equipment, how to pair their smartphone to their RV for uh, a Bluetooth capabilities, such as like slides and lights and different things like that. Um, it's, it's super important that customers are aware of that. And I also make sure it's part of my sales training with dealerships because it is such a valuable resource um, to be able to quickly scan that in, especially again, not everybody has their uh, owner's manual tucked under their arm when they're trying to, you know, winterize their coach or hook up to satellite or cable or what have you. So super, super uh, important information right there. Yeah, I guarantee you they have their phone. You want to go back to that real quick? Paul? Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, so on this, this is super important for especially like a sales guy because mm -hmm. Brinkley, I got to hand it to you guys. You guys, your guys' website is incredible in the industry. Because if you try to go on basically any other website, manufacturer website, it is hard to find information. You guys have done a wonderful job at that. So for a consumer, awesome job. And then obviously as a dealership salesman, this helps a ton because every you have, say, 11 different fifth wheel brands. Mm -hmm. uh, every single one of them's got something different about it and you can't find any information. But the customer is yeah. probably going to ask a question that you might not know the answer to. Yep. So this helps out a ton. It is, uh, it's invaluable really. And, and to your point, I, I will second that, um, coming over here and seeing the amount of, um, uh, you know, resources that they've put out there, whether it be videos or how to's and, and it's constantly being updated too. I know our marketing team and our product specialists work really, really hard on creating content that's useful. Um, it's, it's, it'll never stop as far as, you know, the changes that we make to the product or new floor plans that might have a unique feature that we need to shoot a video on. And it's just really helpful to have that stuff at your fingertips and be able to link a salesperson to it because, you know, I cover all of the vicious accounts that sell Brinkley's, but I can't be at every store every day and, you mm -hmm. know, answering questions and demoing things. And um, so it's, it's nice when a guy calls me and they say, Hey man, walk me through how to do this or that. And I can say, Hey, you know, let me send you a quick video. If you have any other questions, let me know. And, and it just, I don't know, it's, it makes things so much easier, especially for the consumer. If it's a Saturday night, Sunday morning, and they're trying to pull out of their campsite and they forget how to do something or how to disconnect or how to connect a different item when they're setting up. I mean, 
uh, again, it's invaluable. So, mm-hmm. um, Brinkley full time RV and approved. So uh, we do we do not I should say we do not um, ask the question or or discredit a customer from using their unit as much or as little as they'd like. So any product that we manufacture, we approve the customer to use that thing 365 days a year if they want, or they can use it, you know, two weekends a year. Um, we don't want to dictate, Hey, these are only supposed to be used X amount of time. And, um, I think when we get into the interior stuff, there's a lot of good residential features that point to that, but also on the exterior, there's stuff that we do a couple notes here. Um, there's more that I can expand on too, but a couple notes are the insulation packages. So everything we build is going to have R40 on the floor and the roof. Um, as well as R11 on the sidewalls for insulation. Now, this is a, you know, an R factor that we base off of, uh, you know, different metrics, but it's the high density block foam that we're using in the sidewalls. It's the double insulated front caps. It's the double insulated roof uh, trusses in the uh, in the ceiling, and then also the double enclosed, I should say enclosed, but double insulated flooring, as well as 12 volt tank heaters on all of your holding tanks. So that's kind of a supplement to the ducted heat that we already supply to the underbelly from a dedicated heat duct. So it's just, it's really beefing everything up. Um, You know, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel with insulation, but we do want people to feel comfortable should they decide to use this thing in, you know, 110 degrees in the summer or, you know, zero degrees in the winter below. So, Mm. Um, obviously when it gets to the cold stuff, you really want to be careful, take extra precautions, just like anything else. Um, you can't just sit it out in a field and, you know, Wyoming with a hundred mile an hour winds and (laughs) expect to be solid. And I've been there when it's been pretty close to hundred mile an hour winds. So, which is basically every other day. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, we did talk about this earlier, so I'm not going to spend too much time here, but we do have all automotive grade graphics. Again, sleek, modern, clean lines. These are all back to the five-year warranty through the supplier and through Brinkley. So um, everything runs through Brinkley year one. Um, customer has an issue with graphics. You know, certainly they can reach out to us or have the dealership reach out to us. And then we'll get in touch with the supplier for approval if it's past uh, year one. It's a beautiful unit. There, th- it's kind of hard to see, but when you get really up close... <clears throat> excuse me, there's kind of like a crosshatch pattern on the graphics mm-hmm. and uh, it, it just allows them to breathe a little bit better. So you can do like perforated kind of pinhole perforation or the crosshatch um, on those graphics. Um, one thing that we do like to talk about too is our, our ample amount of storage. So we did look at the 3110 rear storage, um, but our pass-throughs going to be varying. So um Depending on the layout, the floor plan, you know, like a 2900 will have a little bit less than, say, a 3100 in the pass-through due to the upper deck um, mm. layout. But we we average between 110 to 170 cubic feet of exterior storage. And every exterior storage bay, whether it be the front or the rear, has that coin-based uh, tough ply flooring. So that's something that you typically see on, like, a toy hauler garage floor. And it just is more durable. It helps from you know, stuff sliding around like crazy when it's in there. It gives it a little bit more grip. Mm-hmm. Does that stuff will slide around? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. A little, little branding here. So uh, on the rear of all of our Model Zs, and again, excluding that 3110, which is a little unique in itself, we have a junk in the trunk 48 by 40 by 15 storage bay. So the keys here is it's insulated, heated, it does have a motion light, which sensors as you open that baggage door, if you got your hands full uh, with coolers or folding chairs or, you know, foldable tables. Um, you also have a 110 outlet back there. So it highlights the models below. The 3400 is the only one that doesn't. Um, obviously, for clear reasons, it's got a, a giant um, patio, you know, ramp door back there. But that thing is super useful. It's just it's uh, an area again where by doing their due diligence and researching, that's just an area that's typically not used mm-hmm. and uh, it's dead space that why not, you know, work the storage in where we can. Just as well. So our underbody lighting, this is uh, something that we put on all Z's. Normally you don't, I mean, I shouldn't say normally, but a lot of mid pros, mid size, they won't feature this. You see it in more like a toy hauler segment, but 
it just helps around the campsite. Like here's Micah on his trip with family and friends. And one of the things that we have also done is tying in that underbody lighting to our uh, reverse backup lights system. Mm -hmm. So when you put the tow vehicle in reverse, it's now integrated to kick those on to help you seeing around and for your rear observation camera, which I'll show you here in a bit. Dang, that's really cool. That helps out a ton because these things are the kind of pigs behind you when you're trying to back them up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Especially, I mean, you think about our 3610 is over 40, 41, nine. I mean, it's yeah. kissing 42 feet. So you're trying to back that into a site at night and, you know, you can't really see where you're going. And yeah. You know, save health. a lot of marriages with this. Amen. Yep. <laughs> Um, one of the unique features that we have in our pass through bulkhead wall is we're not, we're not trying to hide anything here. So we have a basement utility access. So these doors actually slide open and you have motion activated lighting back there as well. Kind of hard to see in the picture, but this is something I love illustrating. So you can see a few things that again, we'll touch on, but brass plumbing fittings on all of your PEX lines and flex lines. You can see this, here's our little piece of our thermoflex ducting that I mentioned that runs down to the underbelly. Mm -hmm. You can also see something else that we'll touch on in a bit is our wire loom right here. Um, but that's, this slides over and then you can access on the other side as well. Um, the 2900 and 3110 have a little, uh, kind of like a little door that you have to lift up and out um, but on your, your bigger models with the bed slides, you just slide this across. And so for consumers that need to, uh, you know, get to something back there for serviceability for techs, or if a customer's handy and they're not, you know, trying to go crazy, getting into, uh, too many electrical wirings, if they're not, uh, certified to work on that stuff, um, then we would assume a tech would, but yeah, for those that are handy and maybe they wanted to tighten something up that they were worried about or check something out. I mean, it's all accessible. Very nice. Yeah, that helps out a ton because you don't have to. A lot of those underbellies, you got to tear apart to even get into the system. Of that. Oh, yeah. You got to cut stuff out. You got to rip bulkhead walls out and then reapply, you know, put them back together later. It's just, it can, it can get a little hairy. So, yeah, you walk into a server shop and you see stuff laying over there and you're like, oh, dear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, one of the other things that we're doing, and I just briefly touched on it, but all of our wiring for the floor mid deck ceiling is all coming in pre-cut, um, labeled, harnessed and loom. So uh, what I illustrated on that last photo was just how clean everything looks to the visible eye, but this is all running throughout the parts that you can't see. And it helps with a lot of different areas, right? So our production workers, it cuts down on their, you know, having to run all these wires by hand, cut everything. You've got wires running at different lengths stuff's not labeled it gets messy it gets tangled um for your guys at the dealership level and, and other dealers you know when they're trying to service the unit it can be a nightmare mm -hmm. um trying to figure out what goes where and and then untangle the mess and so everything comes in pre-cut from our supplier and then um and then labeled and harnessed like that so it'll be you know in a in a bundle like that for each unit so our plant workers it just ups the efficiency level. It cuts down on the time of having to do all those other items and they can really focus on making sure they're building good quality units. So these are third party built sp mm -hmm. specific to each floor plan. Yep. That's yeah. Cool. As far as like the length of wire. So, you know, a 2900 to get from, you know, the wiring from your, you know, breaker, the, uh, the uh, monitor panel all the way back to your slide out versus a 3100 or a 3610 or, you know, to get around the unit, it's going to vary from floor plan to floor plan. So very cool. Super, super important thing mm -hmm. that we're doing. And, and again, this is not just for the customer, but also for your techs out there in the field. It, it, we don't want units coming in and sitting locked up in a service bay for, you know, a month to diagnose. Yeah. And the wire loom makes it real clean. Looks good in there. Um, our Thermoflex heat ducts, it's, again, this is something that really you got to touch, see, and feel, but <clears throat> this is kind of like a, a really durable, dense woven plastic type material. It's not going to rip and tear like your typical dryer hose vents. Mm -hmm. You know, you snag those on something sharp or they get caught on something in the underbelly and it could, it could be a little puncture that turns into a big tear mm -hmm. and you're losing all your efficiency of your heat ducting you know, by producing heat where it needs to go. And so this thermoflex ducting, 
won't be tearing on stuff. You won't be, you know, pumping air ambiently all over throughout the coach underbelly. It's going to be dedicated where it needs to go. That's awesome. Yeah. That, that, that heat duck stuff is just, it falls apart. <laughs> mm, yeah. And you know, I've, I don't think it always will, but if it's not, you know, secured properly and, um, or it could leave the factory looking great. And then, you know, a tech works on something and doesn't notice and splices into it and, you know, anything can happen. So, um, plastic fittings is kind of the industry standard to use all plastic fittings and, you know, between your PEX lines, we've chosen to put, produce our units with, uh, all brass fittings. So your elbows and T fittings, and then these little clamps here are hydraulically installed at the uh, supplier level. So it's to a certain spec on tightness. Uh, so we're not over tightening or under tightening. And, um, you know, we've had great success with going with brass fittings. Of course, it's a higher end way to do it. So your plastic won't feel the wear and tear. Um, brass isn't going to, you know, crack and break down by being bounced down the road. That's the first time I've heard torque specs on plumbing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. And it's all, it's all done specifically uh, to ensure, you know, for peace of mind that we're not, you know, we're not having guys in the plan on an off day and over tightening something that, you know, we can ensure that it's done specifically the same way every single time. That's awesome. Few items on our exterior kitchen. One thing you will notice with our floor plans, we don't have a dedicated built-in outdoor kitchen with the pullout cooktops and the mini fridge and all this. Now we do have a, you know, a mini fridge on the 3610. Um, but what's, what's nice about us is we've chosen to incorporate just max amounts of storage and let people kind of build out to the end user what they want to use it for. Mm-hmm. So if somebody wants to bring along a little Blackstone, they can, and you can tap right into the LP quick connect line. If you want to bring a, you know, Traeger, plug it into the 110 out there, or if it's a gas, you know, Traeger, you just, pop it into the LP. Um, you also have hot and cold shower ports on both sides of the coach. So you'll have uh-huh. one on your camp side, right at the, you know, pass through compartment uh, door on that door side. And then you also have the other on the utility center where you hook up all your water. I think that's smart because the outdoor kitchens, I've never really s- I've seen maybe one that I'm like, this makes sense. Otherwise you're bumping your head or you can't see any cause it's dark in there. Mm-hmm. I'm not a huge outdoor catcher for fan, uh, especially when everyone has those Blackstone griddles and trailers yep. that they bring along with them anyway. So it makes yep. sense to me. You see, you see them at every single campground. Somebody's got a Blackstone out. Somebody's got a Traeger. Or even like they'll bring their – I mentioned it before, 34, and a little Weber grill with charcoal. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's so many options and opportunities. And based on the amount of storage we give, um, a customer really shouldn't have an issue of, okay, where do I put this thing when I want to take it with me? Mm-hmm. Um, we run two 30 pound LPs on everything. Um, so you'll have a dedicated bay for each LP tank. You do have room, oh, I'm sorry, integrated tank sensors as well for the levels of the LP. That's you do awesome. have room to put 40s in aftermarket. So you can see there's some headspace here if you needed to upgrade. Um, if you're going to go on a longer trip or, you know, you're going hunting or, you know, there's plenty of room. That's again, that's not something you always will find in a midsize. So that's uh, something that they knew is really important to a lot of consumers as far as feedback goes. That's cool that you can upgrade to 40 because not a lot of them can. Um, We do provide space in our front bay here. Now, this obviously isn't a generator, but there's room for a 5.5K or 5,500 gen. Um, We do work with uh, RVMP on our Model G. Through our parts department, there's an aftermarket generator kit. So that would include, you know, transfer switch, control switch, uh, wiring, mounting equipment, and the gen itself. And the dealership level can install that for the customer. They could have it done, you know, third party. But again, in most mid-sized fifth wheels, it's it's not as easy to work with because you've got either a more narrow or shallow uh, front bay under the kingpin, um, hmm. or they've got too much clutter up there to uh, to be able to fit something like that. No, those pre-cut holes for the generator are already there or no? No, we have uh, we have instructions that I've sent out to dealers when they do inquire. So it is something that, you know, we provide and try to assist in helping, you know, guide the dealer for the install. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, they're not, it's not pre-cut. We just, we have too much of a mix of, 
customers if we pre-cut that already or you know scored it out and somebody goes man i would never use this yeah uh with the generator and then we have others that say i've got to have it so we make it as easy as we possibly can without you know already doing all of the the cuts and everything yeah it makes sense it's just it's a smaller percentage of people i guess yeah i mean yeah i i see both sides and i think kind of geographically it depends on where people are and what they're using mm-hmm. the the coach for yeah Dual recessed battery box. So that's just going to free up more space as well um, going through there. So you can fit two two batteries in there. It's already vented and everything you can see. Um, I don't recall if we have a slide for this, but we are also inverter prepped. So mm. our inverter um, prep on our 24s was all tied to everything but the AC and the um, fireplace. So you can run all of your 110s and your microwave off of the uh, inverter prep. How much watt can you set into there? Uh, it's a 3,000 watt prep. Okay. Yep. And then uh, it comes standard with a 370 watt panel. And again, I might be getting too far ahead of myself. I'm pretty sure we've got a slide here coming up that'll explain some of the solar oh, okay. equipment. Ah, like this one, right? Oh, there you go. <laughs> so here's our inverter prep. Um, one thing we have changed in recent months is we've gone from the 50 amp charge controller to a 60. Um, but we still do provide one 370 watt panel solar. Um, you can expand upon that. You can get one additional 370 mm-hmm. watt panel after market to go to 740 total. And that kind of maxes out with our current wiring setup and, and charge controller setup. So if they wanted to do inverter and then a second panel, um, that's, that's probably the max as far as the panels go. Um, but again, I think that suffices for most. I mean, it, it, it gives you plenty where you can <laughs> keep your battery bank charged up pretty well. Oh yeah. I mean, it, most people come with 200, mm-hmm. you know, and then need 400 yeah, every once in a while, but yeah, this is awesome. You can go to 800 basically. That's quite a bit. Um, you also do have uh, lithium ready. So our converter auto detects lithium battery and, uh, oh, won't really? let it get too low or overcharge it. And then you just select your battery type on the charge controller, which obviously the uh, interface will look a little different on 60, but still by Fury on. Very nice. So on our front caps, we've got a, a high gloss gel coat painted front cap, all black um, automotive grade paint. And then we do lenses that cover a bar LED light in each corner. So instead of your individual diode lights, you know, like what's under an awning or an underbelly, um, these are going to be one straight bar light, which just show that much brighter and cleaner. And then having that lens cover on or lens cover on there is just a little bit more automotive. In yeah, design. If you don't mind me just asking. Like super sleek. Yeah, super slick. But what's the like pro of having that front front end uh, automotive grade paint? Oh gosh, I mean the the cap is typically something that you see if you look at an older unit that's just fiberglass with no paint. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll know. It's, it's going to start fading over time and that, that fiberglass won't stand the test of time the way a, an automotive paint. I mean, you know, it, it's just night and day difference in my opinion. Yeah. So Especially I, if I, you're going black. You know, you got you to gotta give them the best quality if you're going to go something like that. Yeah, I'd be up there waxing it once a year. <laughs> I got a black and Jeep and it's awful. It and, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I've never owned a black vehicle um i have a white truck and i don't it'd be hard to get me to go away from white now because i'm like man i can get this thing dirty and it doesn't show up yeah i'm regretting it uh slim rack mechanisms for your bedroom slides and wardrobe slides so this is something you know basically there's three types of in-wall slide out mechs that you can go with one will be a cable driven slide that you've probably seen for years and years the other is a schwintech slide and then this is the slim rack Um, We've opted to go with Slim Rack for kind of a multitude of reasons. It's a high-end slide-out system that, you know, you typically find on motorized rigs. And uh, what's nice with that Slim Rack is it it allows a lot of tolerance since these teeth and gears aren't actually physically attached to the box. So it allows a little bit more play and tolerance as you're moving that slide in and out. Um, And it maximizes your overall headspace. So specifically for like a bed slide when you sit up in bed you're not banging your head on a on the ceiling because they're hiding a big motor um and it's it's more used for like lighter weight less depth applications than like a through frame slide for your your galley your kitchen slide and your seating side 
Um, but yeah, great, great mechanism. And it's, uh, it's proven to work out well for us. One thing I will note here is always make sure you've got a battery hooked up. Even if you're plugged into 50 amp with no battery bank, um, it does draw a lot of, uh, a lot of power to run these. So that's something that we always recommend. Something I mentioned in trading that make sure you've got batteries charged up attached to the rig. In addition to being plugged in, um, it'll, it'll get you a lot less headaches that way. Does it pour more than a short tech? I'm sorry. Tech? Sorry. Does it pull more than a Schwinn tech? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I don't know that it pulls more. I don't, I don't have the metrics for all that, but, um, I think the same could be said about Schwintech probably anything that's electric like that. And then landing gear, like leveling, um, it's always going to have a, a highest amount of draw, um, outside of like ACs, but you know, AC, you gotta be plugged in anyway. Um, but yeah, the, the slide out max and also the leveling is I've always been told, just make sure you've got full battery and plug in or, you know, a full charge on the battery. Oh yeah. So our on-command uh, utility center, there's a lot to kind of talk about here in this package. So starting at the top, <coughs> excuse me, we've got electric dump valves. Now these switches, when you flip them to the up position, that's going to open that valve all the way. When you flip that, that button down, it'll shut it. Easy way to identify is if that light is on or flashing, that means that those valves are open. Hmm. We do have a little cutout hatch on the underbelly of each coach to drop that open and then you can manually access the, uh, the dump valve override. So if you ever had a power failure, something wasn't operating, you can actually still get to those without saying, Hey, I'm, I'm kind of stuck here and I can't dump my holding tanks. I'm ready to go home. I need to move the coach. You can still get to those. That's cool. I don't, I don't know if I've heard that before an electric dump valve. Yeah, and again, this is something that not a lot of towables are using. Um, very few uh, towable lines, and then you know, again, you see this on higher end stuff like motorized. So fancy. Um, we do have an easy fill function with uh, winterizing, so you can either flip your end of your retractable hose reel to this side, which will be like city water, fresh tank fill. What's nice is you can take, you could actually disconnect this and just attach another hose thread that in there like a little, you know, eight, 10 foot hose and you can siphon fresh water right into your holding tank. So if you're doing dry camping, also it siphons in uh, antifreeze while you're winterizing the unit. So you don't have to run it through all of this hose reel, which if you've skipped ahead is 65 feet worth Ooh. of hose. So, you know, you can take that off. And then on this right side is your black tank flush. So if you were going to, you know, be done at the campsite, you unthread this, flip it over to the black tank flush and, uh, you know, run some pressured water through there and it's going to clean out your holding tank. Um, if you notice too, everything's got brass fittings in here, even not just hidden behind the scenes, but also where you can see it. And then that hose reel is really convenient. There's a bib reel back here, right behind the bulkhead. And that extends out 65 feet. Jeez. Is that an electric sure. reel? It is not. It's manual, um, okay. but super easy to navigate. And if it ever got jammed up or stuck, you can you know get to the other side of it from the other uh, the other end there. Okay. Very cool. So our dump station package. So again, I keep skipping ahead of myself, but um, there's a few things on here that I well, I should say one thing I talked about. So you have your 84 inch sewer hose container which is right here. So that essentially almost runs end to end since we're on a 96 wide, it, it'll cover most of the underbelly there from my beam to I beam mm -hmm. clear termination tank cover, which is a bigger deal than most people give it credit for. If you accidentally flip one of those tanks or say you're camping with the kids or the grandkids and they <laughs> run by and flip a switch on the black tank, yep. you want to know what's coming. So um, that's something that I always highlight in training. Um, that's something that let's put it this way. That's something that was, one of the 250 changes from Proto One. That's, that's, good a good, that's a good idea. Oh, yeah. Accidents happen, and that would be not a good accident to happen. Oh, yeah. Um, we do have uh, our holding tanks, which I mentioned before. <coughs> Excuse me. 75 gallons of fresh water. We have a true 90 gray. So what that means is... We've got a 45 and a 45, and normally you're dedicating one to your bedroom 
or I'm sorry, your bathroom, kitchen, or gosh, your bathroom, shower, and sink, and you'll have another 45 dedicated to your kitchen sink. In Model Z by Brinkley, and really expanding to our Model G and other series, but you have a shared 90 gallon capacity. So that means whether you're showering, using the sink in the bathroom, using the sink in the kitchen, it's all going to a shared 90 gallon capacity, which is very, very important, especially for those that do longer trips. You know, there's always one that's gonna fill up faster than the other, and that's gonna be mm. your, your bathroom. So now it's all coming into the same true 90 gallons. It's not a 90 gallon tank, but it's, it's shared uh, overall capacity. Is that a switch or is that just, is they're just connected? They're connected. So the way that they've run all the plumbing, (coughs) if you fill one up, it'll, it'll overflow into the next and it's not going to impact, you know, your capacity in any way versus, you know, if you had two separated, like most RVs, if not all totals, um, then you have to constantly dump one versus the other, especially if you're doing long weekends or a week long trip. Mm. Um, on the 3400 in particular, you'll have that 90 true, but you also get 45 for the rear kitchen. So there's a separate uh, um, dump valve switch by that outdoor kitchen area on your 3400Z. Jeez. So 135? Mm-hmm. Jeez, Pete, that's a lot. <clears throat> and then lastly is our off door side motion scare light. And then I we looked at it before, but the underbelly light too. One thing I did want to note here, it's really hard to see, but you do have that little cutout hatch typically is going to be right around here by your um, dump valve override. And it's what's nice is you have one gate valve for your um, black tank and one gate valve for your gray tank to open and close. Very nice. One thing that we do on the exterior to provide, again, more of an automotive grade finish and look is we have rivets on our skirt metal instead of screws. So really what I like to illustrate is right along this transition piece, normally you're going to have a ton of screws Mm -hmm. and those screw heads either back out or they start to rust or they get sheared off. You know, somebody knocks into one and they just don't look quite as nice. Mm -hmm. So everything's nice and clean. This is all metal backed. And then we rivet on even like that wheel well base cover. It just looks super, super clean yeah, from it's the a outside. Lot more slick look. Mm-hmm. So our sealant technology, we do a lot here. Um, that's really important for the consumer really at the end of the day. Um, we have Q131, which is like your closed cell butyl foam. It's like a tape almost, and it it acts as a gasket. So that's going to be around like baggage doors, windows, entry door, around your front cap area. So think of like a little gasket seal where those are being put in. Mm. Um, And then you can see here like metal building grade tape. So it's not too often we see RVs have like the um, uh, butyl putty that starts to ooze out when expansion and contraction from the weather elements changing. Mm-hmm. Um, this stuff's like that closed cell, uh, commercial grade type material. So it, it just, it's not going to break down like your typical butyl wood. Mm-hmm. Also, we do eterna bond on all of our major seams. So that's kind of where you're looking at the green. So that's going to remain flexible and extreme hot and cold. So you can take that down to negative 70 or over 270 on the flip side. And and I hope that we don't ever see those temp ranges. Um, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> exactly. The RV would still be here, but we would not be. Um, the nice thing with the Eternabond is it, it adheres to itself. So, I mean, you look at any social media forum, people talk about fixing things on the roof. They always say, go get Eternabond. It's just a great, great material. We use a one-piece one piece TPO roof membrane. And then um, mylar tape inside the roof rails. So that's the area we use mylar. Um, We also do, which again, probably getting ahead of myself, but we do MS polymer roof sealant for leveling sealant, which is a higher grade material. It's more resistant to cold cracking and, um, you know, expansion and contraction. We do have every Model Z equipped with a backup camera. It's a Furion um, observation camera. And then it does include the 7-inch screen that can be mounted into the tow vehicle. So the typically if, uh, if a brand offers a backup camera, 
the customer will then have to supply their own monitor or they'll just be prepped and then they have to supply both. Um, so we include each item with every Model Z. Very nice. That helps out a lot with those big ones. Oh, yeah. And again, we've talked about it before, but when you put that tow vehicle in reverse, mm-hmm. um, it'll, it'll those illuminate. Mm-hmm. That's so cool. Um, we have an upgraded receiver hitch rated for towing. So this is on all of our fifth wheels where you have the four prong connector here for your trailer lights. And then this is welded to your chassis rated for 300 pounds of carry. So if you want to put a bike rack back there, um, you know, I've seen people tie down like big Yeti coolers, uh, portable generators, you name it. <clears throat> if a customer wanted to tow a little boat or something or an enclosed trailer behind them, you can pull 3000 pounds. That's impressive. Yeah, if it's if it's actually welded to the chassis, you're gonna see those ratings are are right on par with everybody else. If it's bolted to the chassis, then it's really not meant to be pulling anything. Yeah. Um, but we we've chosen the the higher grade versus the lower in this in this product line for obvious reasons. Now, a quick question on that uh, for the four way looks like a four way right there. Do they uh-huh. have chances for like a seven way? Um, so that's a great question. Might, yeah, some boats might have that. So, yeah, I have not uh, mm. seen. There may be an adapter or something that that a customer could put on there, but I have not seen or heard that we've uh, or that there is a seven way available um, to put that back there on the chassis. Hmm. But there may be a. My guess is, like today's day and age, there's an adapter cord for everything. So I don't know if you can go from that like a four to a seven. Yeah. I guess it would depend on the trailer. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um, we have a limited maintenance roof. So we already kind of touched on some of this with the TPO membrane. We do 20-year roof membrane warranty. Um, so that's against defects in the material. Uh, roof is already sealed with that industrial-grade gasket sealant, like I talked about, that that closed cell. Um, it's the same stuff that they use in commercial buildings down south. And then that MS polymer is what you see around here. So it looks similar to everything else as far as a leveling sealant, but it is a higher grade that's more resistant to shrinking, cracking, dry rotting. Very nice. Um, but really maintenance wise, we recommend that it's done approximately every six months or, you know, if you're camping and you, you know, take it under a tree limb or something that's low hanging, you might want to get up and just make sure you didn't puncture or tear anything. Um, as far as sealant is concerned, maybe give it a visual inspection. A lot of dealerships offer some kind of a maintenance program or something where, Hey, we'll do your annual inspection. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, I, I always tell people, look, use your best judgment. If you're camping in this thing all day, every day, um, or like my previous example, if you run it under a tree limb, that's low hanging. I, if it were me and my money, I would get up there and check it out immediately versus finding out the hard way that you did in fact, you know, run under a sharp limb and, uh, or, you know, you've had it sitting outside for, 270 days straight in Arizona and yeah, I might want to go up and check it out. So I did mention this before, but we have Cooper 17 and a half inch H rated tires with the custom Brinkley rims. So these are 16 ply, 125 PSI, um, 70, 75 mile speed rating. These are a huge upgrade in comparison to you know, a, a traditional like E range 16 inch tire on a midsize. This is He's stuff that you good. typically don't see until you get into like, you know, high profile rigs, uh, toy haulers, stuff like that. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a Cooper fan. So I love this. I had some of my last truck. Yeah. yeah they're, they're awesome. They're awesome. <laughs> they are awesome. Um, we do also have banded style tire pressure monitor. I was going to say it on the last slide and I said, you know, it's probably on the next one. Um, <laughs> Three inch display is also included. So just like that backup camera display, you can you can tack that onto your dash. Um, it's actually in, integrated into the tire and wheel. So it's not like a valve stem that you have to pair separately. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, a, it's a better system to have on there to ensure that it's acting more like your tow vehicle versus somebody came by and unscrewed a cap and walked off with it or it fell off during, you know, transporting the unit from A to Z. Very nice. So a couple things about suspension and equipment. Um, we do 7,000 pound axles on every floor plan, except for the 3610 and 3400. We do 8K axles. <coughs> we have uh, self-adjusting brakes. So 
one thing that we uh, have in the Model G is our analog brake system. These are going to be forward self-adjusting, which tend to do the trick. Uh, 4,000 pound heavy duty leaf springs. You also have the, a road armor equalizer. So half inch shackle brackets, bronze bushings and greasable zerks. What's really unique about the road armor in comparison to other equalizers, it's reducing uh, frame chatter or vibrations approximately 32, just under 32% in reduction Whoa. compared to most. That's interesting. What Can you dive into that just a little? Yeah, so it's it's a rubberized suspension system, and there's obviously some comparison in here in the data from testing. Mm -hmm. um, it what that'll really do for the consumer is slow down that vibration from the road um, as you go over bumps in the road, potholes, you name it. And we know that there's plenty of potholes out there in today's uh, roadways, but it will basically track over that and and absorb all of that movement for you versus feeling every bump in the road. Okay. You know, you get in a you get in a car with bad suspension and you can feel it in the wheel mm -hmm. with your hands. Um, this essentially does it does the opposite. It takes that away. Very nice. And then here's a picture of it. So it's all greasable zerks um, with the bronze bushings and then those heavier duty shackles, which just again, it beefs everything up. Awesome. We won't spend a ton of time here because this is uh, something that you see in a lot of tobles, uh, but an extended grab handle. We're using a four-step system here for the entry door. And so by having the 54-inch telescoping grab handle, it's a lower profile. When it's closed, it sits into the unit better. Um, when it's extended, you can actually reach that bottom step for our customers that, you know, might be older, that, you know, it's not as easy to get in and out of the coach or mobility issues. It's it's a nice help to have that handle right there versus the fold-over you know, grab handles that don't extend as far out from the coach. So they got to typically grab onto that when they're on step two or three versus are the those, first one. Yeah. Are those hydraulic steps? They are not. They're no. not the easy assist or whatever. Nope. So they're a Moride tread assist. So they actually flip the step flips up. And I think there's a picture illustrating that, but you can actually turn that tread of the step basically upside down and it'll kick off any dirt, dust, debris, sand, you name it. Oh, that's so it doesn't nice. pull all of that into the coach when you're bringing that back in. Super cool. If you have an excessive amount of like caked on mud or dirt, you got that uh, spray port on the door side that you can attach your quick connect and then just hose them down. There you go. On our entry door setup, we've got the pet defender screen protector, which is right down here. So it's like a wire mesh protecting from, I have a golden retriever. He would be, busting through that screen if it was not on on the door uh the little slap shot screen door opener so that's this bar right here it's an easy in out versus the tiny little handle that's right here you can yeah. you can move this down way back here and it'll open up um you also have a built-in window shade into your entry door window so for those that require more privacy and they don't want people to you know see in the coach or they can kind of peek out from a different window to see who's knocking at the door Beautiful. You also have RV lock keyless entry on every uh, Model Z. So you can create a code, four-digit code on the door, or you have a key fob that also ships with your keys. So easy in, easy out. One thing that I think over gets overlooked too is we have an oversized entry door at 30 by 76. So again, relating to how tall our interior ceiling height is when you go upstairs, <clears throat> the 76 height on the door is something that I, I hope most people – don't overlook when they're, or it might be something that they don't even recognize that most are a little bit shorter, you know, 72, 74 inch. Mm -hmm. Moving to the inside finally. So, you know, going way back to earlier, I mentioned we're an automotive exterior with a residential interior. Yeah. Um, the, one of the main things that I think differentiates us is we put no putty and no staples within the unit. So often really? where you see that is, right through this area in your slide oh. fascias um you'll see a ton of little pin marks and then they'll cover it up with putty and smear it everywhere when it dries out it just it's an eyesore if the light hits it just right so we actually install our slide fascias differently which require no uh, nail guns to be run through to you know tack that together and uh and then no putty too so 
just a cleaner look again a more high-end kind of mm -hmm. aesthetic i didn't know that that's really cool inside this is on our main ac units so you know think your living area is our furion chill cube it's an 18k variable speed unit it's extremely quiet um one of the more quiet that I've ever been around in my short time doing this. Um, it takes a low amp draw to start. So less than five amps when you fire it up. And the max amp draw is only 15 amps, wow. which is a huge pitch. Um, we did testing on some of this, or I should say Furion did some testing. This thing went down from 100 to 72 in about an hour and a half. Um, I've had or heard anecdotal uh examples or instances where it's cooled down even quicker than that like where i've had people tell me man they got this thing down in 30 minutes to you know a, a decent temp when it was very hot out um i can't speak to that in every situation because obviously the testing is the testing but um i've had people that are extremely happy with with this setup nice. what's nice about this is it doesn't require any vents to the roof or the ceiling i should say so there's no vent cuts and it, it actually ducks from a, a little baffle that kind of cycles and, and rotates or oscillates. And so it'll pump the air. What's really cool too, being that's variable speed. So if at your full tilt, it's gonna be the loudest it'll ever get. And then it'll kind of dial that back as you get closer to your desired temperature range. It's got great settings too, like eco gear driven settings. So um, that'll set the temp to 75 degrees and you can run this with a lot less amp draw than if you were running it on you know, your max 15 amp draw. Dang. So you can, in theory, you can run this and your bedroom AC or other items within the coach on 30 amp versus normally you can only run, you know, one AC, you know, or none if you're depending on what else you're trying to do. Um, but yeah, great little unit. Nice little sales point. So this is something that's newer. So this is in all of our models except the 3110 because we don't feature a true like traditional dinette. Um, this began back in December of last year. So we're about six months, almost to the day, six months since it started. Uh, this will be featured in your 3100, your 2900, your 3610 and your 3400. So you'll have this multi-purpose sliding dinette. So this is in the out position in both photos, but this will recess back, see where this little notch cuts back mm -hmm. in. That recesses back in, it has a travel lock um, so it won't be bouncing around during transport, but this provides, and you can see the different setups, either you can center it up and create a more formal eating space. You could use your storage ottoman and bring it over here for two more seats and seat four comfortably, or you can move it over to either side and create kind of a working office, uh, desk area. It's super nice because of everyone's traveling and working away yep. from the office. It's yep. And a lot of people have been asking us about this. Like how many, how many manufacturers are going to be doing this because we don't want the dinette. Well, here's your option. Buy a Brinkley. <laughs> yeah. For the table. Yeah. Um, and then a nice little feature too. We've got the wine rack down below and it's hard to see, but there's a little spot here too, to hang your, your wine glasses upside down. Oh, very nice. I wouldn't recommend it while you're traveling, but uh, no. when you get set up, you can, you can do that. You can do plastic ones. <clears throat> What's nice too, if you're ever entertaining or you don't need this, the uh, table in the out position, you just roll it back in. It won't go completely flush, but again, it'll knock off about half of that space there where it's out of the way. And if you, if you're entertaining guests, they can come in and out or if, you know, kids are running around, pets are running around. You can, um, you can kind of keep it out of the way. So it's not an obstruction. That's cool. Very cool. Silverware drawer at the end of the sliding dinette table. And that just a little area where it's already built in. You can maximize the uh, the space there. Just a cool little setup. It's a Unique little thing, storage man. Idea. Oh, yeah. Jeez. This is not normal. <laughs> no. No. Um, our residential square frameless window openings. So these, uh, they're a lot to talk about here, I guess. They're, they're squared off, so it gives it a more sleek, dynamic look. Um, what's really nice is we've covered our graphics over the windows so they don't stand out like a sore thumb. And they're just a nice clean, kind of like a Euro style look. And they open six inches from the coach. So normally if you go with a, a single pane, or I'm sorry, a squared off framed window, 
you know, frameless set is you're only going to get a three inch roughly opening. Mm -hmm. Um, I've utilized this multiple times in training. If you've got a little breeze outside, you'd be shocked at how much airflow that allows in just even by opening one window. Yeah. Um, and that kind of, you know, goes against the grain of the normal idea of what, what those can do. Um, you do have dual pane options on the, uh, on the model Z product line. So, um, you know, if customers in extreme cold weather climates and they're, or they're going to be living in the unit, you know, creating more humidity within the coach, building up some more moisture within the coach, that's another option to help reduce that window condensation from the inside out. Um, ignore this picture to the left for the table. That's our old style table. Um, I've showcased you the new one that we, that we currently build. Uh, but what is nice about this slide is we have integrated window screens and blackout blinds. So if you notice, we've gotten rid of our window valances that you typically see in RVs, a big bulky valance. I like this. And instead of that, you've got a more residential squared out wood frame around the window. And then your blackout screen system comes from the top. Your regular screen comes from the base. And uh, we have, again, due to consumer feedback, a lot of our early buyers said, hey, these are killer. We love them. But... You know, we're getting little bugs through the uh, the little pinholes from the, the uh, strings on the side here for your screens. Mm -hmm. And so we've now started placing, you know, a fixed screen right into there. So when you open your window, you don't have to move your screens up and down. And it also eliminates the issue of those little, you know, gnats and bugs getting in through the, through the hole. Very cool. I like that window balances thing. I haven't seen that. I don't like the big bulky it, look yeah it's just super super clean and then you can especially when you're at a dinette sit i'm gonna go back here but when you're sitting here uh, again with the new setup but normally those valances they have legs on each side and they just push you away from the wall mm -hmm. especially if you're trying to seat four people around the uh the table um we have custom residential end tables so you've got a lot here Storage wise, this little tabletop pop, pops up and it's on magnet with struts. And then you also have pop up outlet back here. And so if you just tap like the very front end of that, it'll open up. But that's what it looks like all, you know, buttoned down. Very nice. Um, you also get USB, USB C in there. Just like looking. You oh, got yeah. USB C in there too. Oh, heck yeah. Okay. Entertainment center. So you, Got best of both worlds. If you want the TV up, 50 inch smart TV pops up. The little switch, kind of hard to see in this picture, but right under here by the uh, side, that'll mm -hmm. open the TV in the up position or down. When it's down, you've got a window that again opens up behind there. So if you want the max lighting in, natural lighting, you want the best cross ventilation, you want, you know, you just want the view. Um, you run the T or if you just, I, I talked to a few people that believe it or not, do not buy the RV for the TV. And, um, and they say, man, I'll just leave that thing down. I won't even use it. So um, just ample countertop at that point. Awesome. Yep. More coffee space, whatever it is. Be. Mm -hmm. um, we have built in spice rack into uh, different drawers throughout the coach. So this one's probably a 3,100 uh, parked right next to the, fridge where you would kind of be cooking anyway. So it's, it's in a convenient location. You can angle those all in and that is removable. So if you accidentally, you know, forgot to tighten the top and you spill stuff everywhere, you can take that whole piece out and clean it off. Every drawer within the model Z is dovetail jointed box. That's Very a nice. huge, huge thing to talk about because, um, too often you see drawers are stapled and, um, you know, screwed together and they, they're just, not the same type of or the same level of construction that the dovetail joint gets you. Yeah, this won't so wiggle again, around just, and wiggle itself loose. It's, oh yeah. Yeah. And it goes, goes back to the point of the residential interior. Mm -hmm. That's another key feature or another way that we're built for full time. Every Z is going to have the 16 cubic foot, 12 volt refrigerator. And what's unique too, if you notice, even when the slides are in, you'd be able to pop that freezer side open more often than not, you'll have the islands or the fridge is located in such a way that you can't get to it on both sides. Now there's, you know, like for example, the 3,400, um, that one won't be accessible, but like your mainstays, your 2,900, 3,100, you'll be able to, 
get to everything with the uh, the slide closed. Big plus. We have a one-piece steel island base for stability and support. What is unique about this setup is it's anchored down to the chassis. It's it's you know very very sturdy, durable. We've worked in our uh, heat duct registers. Mm -hmm. So for your furnace when you're heating the coach, they're under the tow kicks of the island. We've got some accent lighting under there. This also allows us to narrow up our island base. Not only does it provide support for the island, but then too, you can run in your two flush floor slides in the main living areas. That's awesome. Yeah, a lot of those are just cabinets. Just slap them on there. <laughs> oh, yeah, and they're just screwed into the floor and yep. wobble around or fall mm -hmm. loose. I've heard horror stories about stuff <laughs> happening with kitchen islands. Um, mm -hmm. We have an integrated dog dish or pet dish, cat, dog, whatever you want. Um I do, I do often hear people say, man, my dogs are huge. That just won't cut it. Okay, well, don't use it. It's out of the way. It's not hurting anybody. But for yeah. those that have smaller pets, um, or if they want to just fill up both with water for the pets just to, you know, get a drink when, and move on, um, mm -hmm. those are nice because they slide right in and out of the island base. Awesome. We've got two trash cans in every Model Z, so you big pull out there. And then above that is your stow-and-go paper towel holder on the bar already. You can take that out, use it for storage if you want to leave that out at your campsite when you're on the go or if you want to leave it in to just unroll it and carry on with your day. It's all uh, locked and loaded, ready to go. Yeah, it's another one of those little things. A lot of places, I mean, a lot of manufacturers don't even have a place for their trash can. It's in the pantry, right. you know, and then they have this nice little spot for the paper towel holder. <laughs> and then you can take yeah. that out and put it on the counter. That's yep. just nice little things here and there and throughout this coach. It's just, it's just sets itself apart from everybody else. Well, and again, it's a lot of homes have pull-out trash storage now. I mean, mm -hmm. this, is, this is taking a lot of unique modern – custom built home designs and applying it to a, an RV. Very nice. Um, we have a large 84 inch pantry. So you get all adjustable shelves. Now our 2900, you'll have like your fixed bottom shelf right here due to the, the furnace being back there, but your main uh, uppers will all be adjustable, which is really nice too. We, we included a, a 110 outlet. So if you want to plug in, like in this example, we've got a little Keurig in there. Or you can do can opener. Oh, you, can nice. do, you name it. Yeah, but it's super convenient to have that right there. Um, that's within there. The one tens within the in the pantry. Oh yeah. Yep. Oh, it's already cool. integrated into the pantry. Yeah. Um, and then you can see like the little, you know, the the track here, so you can adjust these shelving shelving units if you need more or less space between. Um, it's hard to see, and I think the next slide illustrates. But this little conduit right here is a wire chase. Um, so if you want to run aftermarket wiring up to the roof, there's an access point. Mm. So if you needed to install anything up on the roof uh, and then run the wiring back down, which oh, I was is. right. So it'll give you access to the roof through the pantry. And then also you, it'll go down to your basement or your, you know, uh, pass through bay. This will be different places throughout floor plan specific, but in the 3100, this is a good illustration of that Sweet. wire conduit. All of your ceiling lights in the living room are dimmable. Um, one other note I like to make with consumers is this also, if you look, it's hard to see in the picture, but these are all flush mounted ceiling lights. So, you know, it just cleans up the overall look. And I mentioned before on our Furion, AC, we have nixed these two AC vents. So that was an older photo with the uh, previous AC unit that we utilized. Mm -hmm. Now with that Furion chill cube, these are gone. Nice. Entrance steps floating, just nice, convenient place to kick off your shoes, sandals, kick them under there. Um, that way they're not piled up at the front door. Everybody's <laughs> tripping over them. Yep. You also have this the uh, lighting that you can flip on and off. Very nice. I've already talked about the shower, so like as far as the size goes, but what's nice is it's a low profile surround, uh, one piece fiberglass, uh, sliding glass door, and then you get the quad sprayer residential shower head. That's nice. 
the, oh yeah, way high end. You got the little wand here. If you want to just use that and kind of, you know, rinse your back off your hair. And then you've got all different, uh, zones here, depending on what you want to use. Nice room, my shower. <laughs> and then also we do a Marine grade shower light runs around the top here. Oh, that's so our, it really lights up in there. Oh yeah. One thing we have done, um, we've gone away from skylights, uh, Ultimately, they, they chew up a lot of real estate up on the roof um, if you wanted to install extra additional equipment aftermarket up on the roof. and uh, But what we have done is we've cut out an inner to give customers more headspace if you're taller. And so by having that light there, it's just it's the best of both worlds. You know, the, the skylight, obviously, the part of the objective or idea was to allow more natural light in. Yeah. I've mentioned this multiple times, so we won't spend too much time here, but uh max ceiling height when you are inside and those taller customers when they're walking through doorways and especially as they're making beds and all that it's 79 and a half inches from top to bottom for your interior ceiling height and this is a mid profile technically right yeah mid-size yeah, luxury so it's that's it's, pretty awesome that's a that's a key area where we don't like to brand ourselves as mid pro where we call it mid-size luxury because mid pros, mid profile units, mid size units as a standalone don't offer that. Correct. Um, tying in with the main ceiling lights in the living area, you're also getting dimmable bedroom ceiling lights. Um, and there's just a little slider on those. It's, it's super nice. If you want to turn lights down, you don't want them super bright. Um, you can kick those down. Nine inch memory foam mattress with radius corners. We're doing a bamboo mattress, uh, just an upgrade. Again, we do know that people are spending a lot more time in our, our units. And so we want them to be comfortable when they're doing so. Um, obviously everybody's going to have their particular preference on mattresses, but we have chosen to go with an upgrade versus the standard kind of junk. Well, I don't want to bash, but just, you know, <laughs> RV mattresses are not comfortable. Let's put it that way. So we have oh, yeah. upgraded our <laughs> A lot of people upgrade their RV mattress almost immediately. So this is really, that's a big plus. Um, we also do integrated bed slide storage. This will be on your bed slide models, only excluding the 3400. So your 3610, 3100 will have that just as a nice little area to put some extra stuff. Sometimes people say, well, where am I going to put this? Where am I going to put that? I got, you know, I would take probably the other side of the bed where there's not much space because I don't have a lot of stuff on my side of the bed. My wife, on the other hand, would use that side. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. yeah uh this is going to be again all bed slide models um and you have a separate fixed wardrobe area so if you don't want to do a washer dryer great just more storage for clothing you got the towel bar or the uh, hanging rack there if you decide to go stackable you take out the center shelf we also have louver doors uh sold aftermarket through parts if they wanted to allow some breathability from utilizing the washer dryer but Everything is already plumbed up there. You've got a dryer vent cut out for your uh, service team to uh, vent out of the coach, and it's good to go. Very nice. Yeah. On our bed slide models, we've got the dresser at the foot of the bed. Um, that top slides out from the coach or from the uh, wall, I should say. And you've got a little felt pad under here. You can hide your valuables and then slide it back, and nobody knows any different except the people that have watched this video. Um, and, uh, what's nice too, is for those like outs, excluding the, uh, 3,400 or if I've even had this come up where customers say, Hey, I'm going to use the sliding dinette and my wife's going to use the, uh, dresser upstairs and we're going to have separate working stations. There's an aftermarket leaf insert that just pops in right here. And then you can put like computer monitors, keyboard, and then, you know, bring up a little chair up here Wow! and you can use that as a desk desk space as well that's a nice little option mm -hmm. we do have uh like residence residential water shutoff valves at all of your interior fixtures so think bathroom sink kitchen sink plumbing uh as far as like toilets and showers and all of that if you were to ever experience an issue with something you don't have to go completely shut down and prevent yourself if you have a drip at a toilet you should still be able to wash your, you know, dishes at the sink or vice versa. Mm -hmm. You should still be able to take a shower if your kitchen sink has an issue. So we provide that uh, as just a more peace of mind where you can 
you know, isolate the problem, fix it, and be back on with your uh, on with your day. Big plus. Uh, one of the last things I think this is one of the last things on the outside six foot coiled breakaway cable um, versus your traditional kind of wire cable that coils nice because it hangs in lower profile when it's not hooked up, so you don't have to wrap it around the pin box and potentially forget that it's all wrapped around when you tie you know connect it back to your to your tow vehicle. Um, it just keeps out of the way. It's just yeah. a lot easier to maneuver with. One thing that we do at Brinkley uh, for all of our um, customers for the first year of ownership from their retail purchase date, they get a complimentary uh, 365 days of 24 seven roadside program or roadside assistance. So that's through safe ride RV and uh roadside assistance benefits obviously they are all listed right here i won't go through each of them but think of hey i'm towing my rig and i had an issue with a tire or something happened where i could not continue moving um what's nice is you can contact this service and obviously every dealership has some kind of program or something that they offer as well that may overlap some things that safe ride doesn't doesn't cover you know this isn't necessarily like an extended warranty program. So I always encourage dealerships, you know, make sure that you're kind of going through the differences with what you guys offer versus the safe ride program. Hmm. But we do have, um, we do have all that information inside of every coach as well. So if a customer forgets about, Hey, what, what's the number do I call or how do I get a hold of somebody? It's, it's all within their coach. Is it on the QR code? Uh, you know, I don't think they have a QR, but it's when you open your monitor panel door, it's right there. There's a big Perfect. sticker and there may be one on there, but I don't recall that there is. That's a big then, plus. Uh, that's, that's people don't do that in the RV industry. So that's really cool that you guys are. Yeah. I know some brands that do it. Um, but the fact that we make it so accessible for them to find that info, I think yeah. is pretty important because, you know, sometimes people either forget or, you know, it's something that you see every time you go to, you know, run a slide out or uh, turn lights on or check your tank levels. It's all yeah. right there. It's awesome. So our back end support system, and you guys are uh, obviously a great partner with your Bish Fix and what you do to take care of the consumer. But um, through our dealer portal, we've got tons and tons of resources for dealers. Um, and in our mindset, we have the best service team in the industry. Um, we don't go into it with, you know, how do we not have to pay for something? How do we not have to cover something through warranty? How do we nickel and dime a dealer? At the end of the day, the consumer is the one that loses if if a manufacturer walks into a situation with that mindset. Mm -hmm. Now that said, I mean, we still need to make sure that we're tracking everything, doing everything properly on our end. But um, ultimately, our goal is to take care of our customers and, and take care of your customers, right? Or any of our dealership partners. Um, we want to make sure that we're putting our best foot forward and saying, Hey, what can we do to make this situation better? Yeah. Um, and there's a couple of things that we do, but uh, one big thing for me is the auto approval on the, the smaller jobs, right? It could be trim. It could be hinges for a cabinet. It could be something minor, right? Um, that way as a dealer, you're not sitting around waiting for manufacturer approval on something. It just automatically pushes through. That's cool. Um, and, and, while we continue to grow on the front side, meaning, you know, sales and production, we need to continue to grow on the backside. And I think that they've done a really good job and the ownership team is fully on board with, Hey, if there's a position that we need to fill, let's fill it. And let's not, let's not get behind in the service realm where we can't take care of our customers or our dealers anymore. Um, let's continue to grow that with or ahead of, of sales. Um, so it's, it's a good mindset to walk into. And again, it all goes back to the experience level these guys have as far as uh, do the right thing, take care of the customer, make sure, make sure we're supporting our employees, make sure if somebody has something that, you know, they're bringing to the attention of an owner that they're listening and taking it into, into consideration. Yeah. And I remember so I met with uh, Ray Duffy and Josh Staley, uh -huh. uh, which is Micah's brother. Yeah. They were in here. We tried to do a little podcast and it didn't come out super well. So unfortunately, well, I don't think we're going to release that. I'm going to have to talk to those guys again. But they were talking about after sales report, uh, support, I mean, and then uh, warranty claims and all that. And they like, customers can actually talk to Josh 
in Ray. Like that oh, yeah. happens. And oh yeah. That's not really a thing in the industry either. So super cool that you guys are doing that and um, that they're able to do that to get a hold of the actual manufacturer and like, hey, let's walk you through it. Let's get you taken care of. Obviously, not everything can be taken care of that easy, but still cool that you can talk to the manufacturer themselves. Yeah, and we've got, I mean, outside of the service side of things, which is very important that they can, you know, reach out and talk to somebody. We've also got product specialists that handle, you know, factory tour setups. They do a lot of uh, sales related questions as far as, you know, potential buyers that, hey, I've got this RV now and I want to know what do you guys do different or how do you change this or how did you navigate that? And and so those guys are very, very educated on the product side of things. Um, and then us as sales directors, we're out, you know, doing product training at the dealership level, working, you know, retail shows and and stuff like that. So it's, it's a unique setup and a unique team style system that we've created together. And, and um, I'm just, I'm happy to be a part of it. It's been awesome. I know I haven't been over here, you know, from day one, but um, it's, it's definitely something special and it's, it's happening fast. It's growing quickly. I didn't expect, um, I didn't expect to see things happen the way that they have as quickly as they have, but it's the consumers are speaking that they're taking right to it. And uh, it's it's pretty cool to be part of. Oh yeah, Brinkley is taking the RV world by storm, man, and I love it. <laughs> yeah. Well, Paul, is that is that everything that you got? I think so. Unless you have any questions for me. Um, no. Okay. You killed I, it. I have nothing. Can't even think of anything. I appreciate uh, the opportunity, the time, and and hopefully this was a value. We can get together, do it again on. Um, we got two other segments we can still talk about. So. We can yeah. put some and then together. we got 2025 after that. Yeah, right around the corner. Um, actually, we can talk about that if you want. Um, we're we're getting ready to flip model here. Um, a lot of it's going to come down to small, subtle tweaks. We don't do these big, giant model year changes like some other guys. Um, we're dedicated to changing on the fly. So there's some minor stuff that we've looked at, but a lot of that those changes like 60 amp charge controller and some of the other stuff we've already incorporated has already been rolled out into, uh, into the field. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily like hold your breath waiting for this big, you know, night and day difference from 24 to 25, but yeah, we're, we're going to keep doing that all throughout the year. So. Awesome. Paul, well, you gave us all an education today and we ambitious. Thank you so much for joining us today. So if that's it, this is everything you need to know to buy a Model Z, Brinkley. One last question we forgot to ask Paul because uh, we got caught up in conversation. But the last thing is, why wouldn't somebody want to buy a Brinkley? Well, I, I'm biased. Uh, <laughs> I think they should, but it's a great question. Um, I think the best way I could answer that as of right now would simply come down to we may not have a floor plan for somebody's specific needs. We may not have a, a segment that they, you know, want to get into. Um, I have talked to quite a few people that are holding out for more travel trailers, you know, and we're just scratching the surface of what a travel trailer is at Brinkley. So um, that may be one of the few reasons that somebody doesn't buy one or why they wouldn't. I mean, um, I talk to so many people that are just so bought in and they don't even own one yet, but they know they're going to, you know, mm -hmm. that's, you hear that time and time again. Oh, I, it's not if, but when I buy a Brinkley. So, um, I think there's a lot of that people just waiting for that right model, um, waiting for that certain length or weight or whatever it is. That might be the caveat that's holding them up. But, um, yeah, that's probably the best way I could answer that one. Yeah. The last, the only thing I can think of was probably price. But I mean, they're not out of the competitive world, but by sure. no means. I mean, no I always say where there's up a there. Will, yeah, where there's a will, there's a way. Absolutely. If they really want something, they'll they'll find a way to make it work. So. Yeah. Awesome, Paul. Well, again, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate Thanks. it. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jake.